Hey guys, King Gath here, and in this video we're going to go over the advanced industrial plot. Consider this a primer on how to play with Industrial Revolution. So the advanced industrial plot is called what it is because it works quite differently than the other plot types. It has a lot more requirements and involvement in how you actually use it. And the name of the game with Industrial Revolution was all about exploration and discovery. So there are a lot of secrets hidden within it. So I'm going to try my best not to spoil anything because the gameplay is going to largely appeal to people who like to solve puzzles or who like to figure out how things work on their own. But there are a few mechanics that I think it's important to know even if you enjoy that discovery aspect. So I'm going to go over the basics. And if you would like more information about how the particulars of different of different building plans work and how they're all intertwined. All of that information is available on our forum. There's a large spoiler thread that's stickied on the Industrial Revolution section so that you can find out all the information if you just wanna jump right to particular buildings. So the way Industrial Revolution is set up, and I'm gonna talk specifically about Industrial Revolution, even though there are mechanics that I'm gonna describe here that are used by add-on packs, but I'm gonna talk explicitly about Industrial Revolution content because some of the stuff that it does is way more advanced than that the add-on packs do. Uh, but when I get to a point of something that I know an add-on pack author has used as well, I will try and mention that. So the way Industrial Revolution is laid out is that when you build an industrial, an advanced industrial plot, you will have six options for your building plans. You will have the excavation pit, the lumber yard, the iron mine, the scrap yard, the oil well, and the community well. And these six types represent the level one buildings of each of the six tech trees. And the way the tech trees work is that as your buildings upgrade, rather than just going into a more advanced version of themselves, they instead produce a more refined version of the resource that each is creating or provide some sort of service using that resource. So the idea is that each of these buildings, regardless of their level, is useful throughout your game. So it might be useful to keep some of these plots at earlier levels so that you can continue to gain that particular resource. And this is an important concept to know, and it's also a good reason to leave the advanced upgrades on manual. So that is why there is a separate option for upgrades and advanced upgrades is because the advanced buildings generally are not just an automatic, you'd want to upgrade them, and some of them you might want to upgrade in very specific ways. Because at each upgrade point, you actually will have multiple options. So for example, when a community well is offered an upgrade, you can choose it to choose you can choose to turn it into a pump station or a brewery. So you have options at each level. And again, this is one more reason to leave the advanced upgrades on manual because the alternative is it will randomly select from one of its available upgrade paths. Now, there are many things we've gotten here to make it easier as you go along, but to start, it's generally best to keep things on manual until you've got your head wrapped around the entire system. All right, so next we're gonna talk about some of the options in the ASAM sensor menu that we skipped in the ASAM sensor video. So the first thing you'll notice here is the access stockpile. So one of the things that's different about these plots, aside from the branching upgrades, is the fact that they require resources to upgrade on top of the normal time component. So the way this works is that each day, these buildings will generate a certain amount of resources. And as I mentioned in an earlier video, the advanced industrial do require power at level one in order to generate their resources daily. So the, while they might build up to level one without power, they do need it in order to generate resources and make themselves eligible to ever upgrade. So they're basically useless if you don't power them. But once they generate resources, they will split those resources between your workshop and the stockpile. And the stockpile is a special container that you can access through the ASAM sensor menu. So we're gonna do that now. And this will have a series of items in it that tell you what you have to give in order for it to upgrade. And generally these are the same items that are going to be deposited into your workbench. So the idea is this container will slowly fill itself up and if you wanna speed it up, if you wanna speed it getting to the amount of resources it needs to upgrade, you can take the resources that it's depositing into your inventory. For example, in the case of the iron mine, these are custom resources created only by this and these aren't available at other points in the game. But for other types, they're generally resources. For example, the lumber yard creates wood, which you can find other places in the game. So you can either donate the stuff that that plot is generating to your workshop by grabbing it out of your workbench and depositing it into this container, or you can grab stuff in the case of things like the lumberyard, out in the world, you can grab your own wood and donate it direct. So you can do either or. 
And you don't have to do this at all. If you want to just let the plot generate its resources on its own, it will, it will just take quite a while. Um, so if you're interested in pursuing the tech trees and digging through and finding all the content, you'll want to get used to this stockpile system where you deposit resources to speed up the upgrades. Now, an alternative is that you can also use this as a way to generate more resources for yourself. So if you really need access to example for some wood and you don't care about that particular plot upgrading, you could continue to raid its stockpile every few days and take those resources for yourself. And that plot would remain at the level it's at and continue to generate you resources. Now, there's a benefit to doing neither, to neither robbing the resources or to upgrading the plot. And that's the overdrive production. So if you let a plot fill up its stockpile and eventually get to the point where it's eligible to upgrade with your manual advanced upgrades on, but you leave those things in there, the plot will begin generating double resources in your workbench so that you can gain access to even more resources. So there's a true benefit to keeping these things at a particular level. Again, so as soon as it's eligible to upgrade, so you'll see on the manage upgrades option that there's an upgrade building option available. If you leave it at that level, it will go into overdrive and produce double resources for you. All right, so we're back in the ASAM sensor menu, and this time we're gonna talk about the manage upgrades section. So the first option, upgrade building, appears to be the same as what you would find on a basic plot, but as soon as you select it, instead of it automatically upgrading, you're presented with one or more options. And these are how you decide what this building is going to become. So we're gonna try and figure out what we wanna change the oil well into. Now, note that if you ever find that there's only a single option available here, it means you've run into a locked part of the tech tree. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Just know that there should at least be two options at every level for each building. So for example, the oil well at level two can become a crude refinery or a plastic and polymers plant. Then when the crude refinery, for example, becomes level three, it has two additional options that it can transform into, whereas the plastic and polymers plant will have two different options so that every tech tree has a minimum of seven, seven different buildings to choose from within it and some have more. And it's possible that in the future I will continue to add additional content to Industrial Revolution to expand these options even further. Now this is one of those points where add-on packs also make use of it. So this branching building plan idea of hitting upgrade and having options, this is a thing that's used in several other add-on packs including Ruined Homes and Gardens, Industrial City, and Wasteland Ventures. And I believe there are probably some others that I'm not thinking of that also use it, but just know that if you're using an advanced industrial plot from an add-on pack, it's very likely that the, they will follow this same formula. And even some for non-industrial plots that can also make use of this branching system. So take note of the mod description page of any add-on pack you're using if you're interested to know if it uses this branching system. So once you're presented with options, if you select one of them, it will pop up with a message explaining to you what will happen with this new building and you get the option to build or cancel. So at the top, it will tell you the name of that level building, who designed it and where it's from. In this case, it's from Industrial Revolution. So if you're trying to work through the Industrial Revolution tech tree, you'll want to focus on those. Then next, it tells you what it's going to do. So while the oil well said produces oil for your city, this one processes the oil and it turns it into a different type of fuel, which you'll learn about in a minute once we let it upgrade. And then the costs will tell you how your settlement needs are affected. So for example, it will have a negative 10 happiness penalty to your settlement and a negative five power, which essentially just means it's going to require five more power than you would expect from a level two plot. So we'll go ahead and hit build this and then we exit out and the upgrade will begin and it will start transforming into an entirely new building. So essentially the advanced industrial work much differently than the basic because it involves many more buildings and you're going to want to have fine tuned control over. Now that might become cumbersome over time because as you develop more and more settlements, you're going to lose the desire to micromanage this and you're going to want to be able to skip ahead to specific buildings and we've got you covered there. So let's say you build a new plot. So and I was going to show you on this community well, but we'll go ahead and just scrap it and I'll show you on a fresh one. So we now have this fresh advanced industrial plot and note what I'm about to show you will work in any settlement. It doesn't have to be. So while the tech trees initially do need to be discovered, which I'll talk about again in a moment, the tech trees do need to be discovered in the same settlement. Once you've unlocked a design, you can access it in any settlement. So if we have a brand new plot and we want to build, for example, a brewery, which we already have, 
you can do the pre-select upgrade path option. And then when you do this, rather than just being presented with the six default options, you will actually have access to any of the things that you've built so far. So for example, we can see we have our brewery, we have the steel mill that we just upgraded, and a few moments once the crude refinery finishes, we will have that available as well. So what happens is if you select a building that normally requires a higher level, so for example, if we choose this steel mill, when you exit out, it will start building the level one version of that. So in this case, it's starting to build the iron mine. Now it's not actually starting to build because I don't have a settler sign. That's why the four rent sign is there. But I recognize that building material stage as being the iron mine. And so it will build the level one building. Then when it gets to level two, it will automatically upgrade to the steel mill that you selected. And then it will stay at that steel mill until you go and manually upgrade it again. So even if you have upgrades on automatic, if you pre-select a building plan path like that, it will switch it back to manual once it reaches that level. And the reason for that is that you might want to keep certain buildings at certain levels. So for example, like let's say I always want to be able to brew beer, I might want to keep this brewery at level two forever. And that's where, again, that option that I showed you in the ACM sensor video that might not have made a lot of sense at that time becomes very, very useful. So if we go to manage upgrades and we hit prevent auto upgrades, I now know that this will remain a brewery forever, even after it's eligible to upgrade. And that's also useful for that earlier mechanic I spoke about with the overdrive system, where once a building has filled up its stockpile and it has reached enough time to be eligible to upgrade, but if you don't upgrade it, it will continue to generate double resources. And so that's, again, another reason to keep it locked down at the current level. All right, so now we're back in the Manage Upgrades menu, and then lastly, we're going to talk about the tech tree. So now this option is only available if you have HUD framework. Otherwise, you've just got to kind of guess because there's no great way to imp implement new HUD options without HUD framework, without also causing a lot of compatibility issues with their mods. So I highly, highly recommend HUD framework if you're going to play with Industrial Revolution. Though note that if you don't have HUD framework or can't use it for some reason, or if you don't care about any of this discovery gameplay and you just want that information handed to you, there are people who have been playing Industrial Revolution for a long time who have done a full spoiler of all of the tech trees and they tell you exactly what you need to build to unlock different things and how you can get access to all the different buildings. And that's available on the forums. There's a sticky thread there with Industrial Revolution spoilers. So if you don't have access to this tech tree or you don't care about it, you can go grab that information now. All right, so when you choose show tech tree, and this is available in the hollow tape as well, it will show you the tech tree of the current building you're on. Now, it jumped over to Lumberyard, that's because I accidentally tapped the aim button. So this, this particular HUD piece is controlled with your weapon. So if you use the aim key, it will switch between the different trees, and you can see at the top, there's the level one building, and then below that, horizontally, are the level two buildings. So for example, our iron mine, you can see the steel mill, and on the left is our first thing we've run into where there's a level two building that's locked out, one that we can't get access to. Well, this will become discovered on this screen only after you build the first one. So in order to be able to build it, you basically need to experiment with the other tech trees. So try building stuff from some of these others and leveling those up until you get to blocks and then build yourself a new iron mine in the future and then test out and see if it has access to that undiscovered new building plan. And essentially you slowly unlock and gain this information and the tech tree is more of an after the fact guide. It's showing you what your settlers have discovered so far so that if you want to go rebuild this in another settlement or if you want to have this information for yourself for when you do future playthroughs, you'll know you have it all in this character. You can come back and reference it. In fact, let's say for example that that iron mine, the second option becomes unlocked. Not only will it tell you what's there instead of undiscovered, it will also right below that reveal what it was that you built that actually caused it to become unlocked in the first place. So you can really get a full picture of how it is your settlers discovered things. And that's one of the keys to the way that this was designed conceptually is the idea that your settlers are the ones discovering all of these new ways to use these materials and you're just kind of helping them along by gathering resources. And so that's reflected in the fact that the discoveries on this screen happen after the fact and not before you actually discover them. Now, there's also certain types of plots, which we'll cover in another video. I will cover the individuals. I've done one spoiler on it already with the brewery, uh, or I'm sorry, with the distillery, but uh, we'll eventually go over videos in this series to talk about all of the secrets that are inside each of these buildings, uh, though that's going to be a little bit further down the line after I've 
disclosed all of the information about how to use the plots as a general scheme as opposed to the individual details of each of these advanced industrial plots. So stay tuned for those if you want spoilers on how to take advantage of each of these buildings because a lot of these advanced industrial buildings have secrets within themselves outside of just unlocking other things. And so we'll cover those in future videos. All right, guys, that should give you a basic overview of how to play with the advanced industrial plots. Now, if any of this information felt like it wasn't in detail enough and you'd like me to double back and cover something a little more thoroughly and not on the building plan specific level, but on the general concepts of advanced industrial, feel free to comment below. I know this was a lot of information. I'd be happy to delve into more in future videos of this type. But otherwise, guys, stay tuned and I'll continue to release additional content to teach you all the ins and outs of SimSub settlements.